Hello everybody, it's Fu here, and today we're doing another Why You Should Use all about Runeragus, a Galarian evolution that's really interesting. And I think that he's got a lot of viability and usability on specific teams, so we're going to talk all about that in this video, but over on John's channel... We'll be looking at Kursla, a very similar Pokemon to Runeragus, as it is the evolution of Galarian Corsola. It's a ghost type now, very cool, very powerful, but before we talk about that, let's look at this really, really cool cool new Pokemon. It's a really cool take on Cofagrigus. I really love that it has the dragon serpent design on there. I really could see them making a variant of this for a ton of different regions, which is just really cool to, you know, picture. I think there's going to be a lot of fun fan art of it. But more importantly, let's look at its siphing and stats as this is a ground ghost Pokemon, which is actually pretty cool. Not something I expected, but it is a really solid typing. You know, it does have a bunch of immunities, which is always really solid. And we've seen with Golurk, this can be a pretty useful typing and with these stats I think this Pokemon could actually be a little bit better as the same stats for the most part as Cofagrigus but it does have 95 attack instead of 95 special attack so this is going to be a more physically offensive Pokemon it'll still obviously more often than not be defensive with that 145 defensive stat but uh, whenever you do run offense whenever you do run you know attacking moves they are going to be of the a physical variety looking at the one ability it gets it gets wandering spirit and the pokemon exchanges abilities with a pokemon that hits it with a move that makes direct contact so that is actually just very similar to kofagrigus's ability but this ability is actually a little bit better at least situationally as it will actually exchange abilities so if you do get a galarian darmanitan's ability watch out this thing is gonna hit like a trade it's gonna be really really cool to see what combinations people can get with this ability especially in doubles but that that's just for the future. Looking at its attacking moves and the stabs that this thing gets, the same type of attack bonus benefiting attacks are Earthquake, which is very good for the ground type, and Shadow Claw, which is all right for the ghost type. There aren't too many great um, ghost type moves that hit really hard. Shadow Claw is okay, it's only base 70 though, so not the most powerful. And Phantom Force, which is more powerful but locks you in for two turns, you disappear and then attack. Um, which is an option, especially as this thing kind of gets status moves and things, so having an extra turn for them to rack up damage can be useful, but it's also risky if the opponent can capitalize on that locking in for two turns. Other coverage moves that it gets are rock type moves, which go very well with ground type for great coverage, and also it gets Zen Headbutt to hit fighting types, for example. Body Press is really cool. It's a fighting type move that uses your defense stat instead of your attack stat to cause damage. And this thing has a massive defense stat. So Body Press is really important for this, especially seeing as a ghost and fighting type are really good offensive typings together. So that's nice. And then it's also got Nightshade. If you just want to run a defensive set, rather than relying on either of your attacking stats, Nightshade will just deal set damage every time that you use it. So that can be nice as well. In terms of setup, it gets Iron Defense, to boost its defense significantly, Amnesia to boost its special defense significantly, Calm Mind which also boosts its special defense balls as well as its special attack but you won't really be using that. This thing has very low special attack and the same goes for Nasty Plot. And then in terms of utility move, this thing gets tons. The main ones I'd say are Stealth Rock and Toxic Spikes to set up entry hazards on the opponent's side of the field, that's fantastic. And also Trick Room, a fantastic Trick Room setter because it has such high defenses that you can really rely on this thing surviving till the end of the turn to get the Trick Room up. You can then Memento on the opponent to pass into one of your Trick Room sweepers, so I think that's an incredible synergy there. You've got things like Trick, which is interesting for choice sets, and then you can spread a lot of status around with Will-O-Wisp and stop the opponent from setting up with things like Taunt and Haze. So loads of utility options, that's only the tip of the iceberg with this guy, but really, really good. Moving into the sets you can run with this Pokemon, we have a Stealth Rock set, and this is just going to be a little bit of everything at once. Because with Stealth Rock sets, there is a lot of varieties. You can just have it be a lead Pokemon, it can be more of a dedicated wall, it can be on the physical side, it can be on the special side. Uh, there's a bunch of different utility moves you can run, so really go crazy with this. It depends on your team depends on how you are as a player this is just one of the many options with a few different moves and a few different looks but uh, leftovers is almost always going to be the item you're going to want to run this pokemon does not have great uh reliable recovery at least move wise so leftovers are going to be very important have to have wandering spirit a very interesting ability you never really know what you're going to get 
um, you know, with that ability. So hopefully it's helpful. Again, you never really know. Max HP is always going to be super useful as this thing does have a very low HP stat. So that's going to help out immensely. And then max special defense, max defense. That's more up to you depending on the team you're running. You're probably not going to invest in max attack. While it will help, it's not really going to be a super offensive Pokemon. You want this to be more defensive. So just either way and obviously change the nature if you are going to go max defensive rather than specially defensive. Stealth Rock, of course, is a staple. And Toxic Spikes, I also think will be a staple as not as many Pokemon get toxic this generation and not as many Pokemon get toxic spikes. So I think this is going to be a really, really reliable and really, really frustrating toxic spike Pokemon to deal with. But it does also get Will-Wisp, which is another good status move. So if you would rather just cripple physically offensive Pokemon, maybe you want to have that over toxic spikes. You definitely don't want to run both of them on the same set as they're really going to cancel each other out. So it's just up to the Pokemon up to preference. And also maybe you want to run Will-O-Wisp on a more especially defensive set. So you can really take on the physically offensive, you know, attackers. And then on a more defensive set, you run Toxic Spikes. After that, Earthquake and Shadow Claw, they're just both stab moves. So it's going to be nice to have, you know, one of the two or both of them. And then Haze is another fantastic utility move just to prevent people from setting up on you and trying to sweep your team. I think one of the most important, if not the most important set for Runerigus is a Trick Room set. Uh, because this thing has the defenses to last the turn to set up Trick Room and generally the most reliable item to hold here is the Mental Herb which prevents Runerigus from getting taunted which would also prevent it from going for the Trick Room. So that is the best way to guarantee that you set up Trick Room. However, you could also run a more offensive item, something like Weakness Policy because it doesn't have the highest attack stat in the game. So once you've set up Trick Room, it means that your slow Pokemon will go first, Runerigus will go first and you want to deal as much damage as possible. Weakness Policy, if you get hit by an attack you're weak to, will boost this things attack and you'll actually be doing a lot of damage. The ability has to be Wandering Spirit but that's kind of cool because you might actually get an offensive ability from the opponent which would be very helpful. Here we've got Brave Nature with max attack so we're going to have we're going to be as slow as possible but have as much damage output as possible and the moves are Trick Room and then a combination of either Shadow Claw and Body Press because Ghost and Fighting type coverage is very good and this thing has such a high defense stat that Body Press is going to be doing tons of damage, Shadow Claw gets a stab, and you've invested in your attack. So that's a really nice combination. Or Earthquake and Stone Edge is just very good coverage. Rock Ground is tried and tested, really good. You can play around with those coverage moves as you want, uh, but those are just two combinations we thought would work. And then Memento, I think, is incredibly important on this because you set up Trick Room, you probably had to take an attack, you might be at very low HP. The best way to deal with this situation and make the most of the Trick Room turns is to go for Memento. Nerigus will faint, you'll drop the opponent's attack and special attack, and then you can bring in a Trick Room Sweeper, which can do whatever it wants. If it just wants to spam powerful attacks, that's great, but it will also have the opportunity to set up. So you can set up a Swords Dance or a Nasty Pot or whatever you bring in, and you'll be able to do tons of damage. So I think this set is going to be a staple Runerigus that you'll probably see quite a bit of. The final set we're going to be looking at is a Choice Band set, which is very simple, but it's going to be a lot of fun on this Pokemon, as it has a usable 95 attack stat, the choice band is really going to elevate it to a point where it's actually scary offensively and that ghost ground coverage is actually pretty solid offensively so uh, we're going to be running 252 attack 52 speed to allow you to outspeed tox effects which can be really really nice especially considering you're going to be able to decimate that thing with earthquake adamant nature to take as you know as much advantage of the attacks as possible uh shadow claw earthquake edgequake is going to be really solid coverage you could also run rock slide if you don't want to miss as much but probably just for the sake of power you do want to run stone edge and trick is going to be super nice on this pokemon i feel like we've given you guys a few of these sets a lot of pokemon did get trick in this generation but this pokemon is really going to get some big hits off but really allow you to cripple some walls which is really nice i think this pokemon is really going to be able to harass teams as it will be able to annoy them uh, physically offensively also get a trick off on defensive pokemon and wandering spirit is always going to be frustrating so now we'll look at how runerigus can perform in the doubles format and here again trick cream is going to be very very pivotal for it i think it is definitely going to be a very good trick room setter it's immune to fake out for example so that's one reason why you might use it over other trick room setters it's got some interesting moves here too things like crafty shield to block utility moves for both it and its partner it's got guard swap which you could definitely use on some gimmicks so that swaps runerigus's defenses with 
the target and so you could make your ally Pokemon really bulky because Runerigus has great defenses. And it has some spread moves, things like Bulldoze to reduce the opponent's speed stat, Rock Slide hits both opponents, Ally Switch is really annoying because it swaps you and your allies positions so your opponent won't know who to attack. And then Earthquake is its main attacking move here which will deal a lot of damage to everyone basically. Its best ability is its only ability in Wandering Spirit and the partner ideas we have are obviously Trick Room Sweepers as this thing is probably just going to be setting up Trick Room so you need the things that can deal loads of damage in Trick Room and also other Trick Room Setters because this thing functions best when Trick Room is up so if something else can set it up for Runerigus that's great but obviously if Runerigus does go down on your team you will need other Trick Room Setters too. And then the only other Pokemon that I put here are low defense Pokemon. And by that I mean Pokemon with like a high HP stat but low defense so that you can guard swap them. So for this, things like Copperaja might make a lot of sense because that thing has a massive HP stat. Middling defenses. If you guard swap Runerigus's defenses onto a Copperaja, it's then got very high HP, insane defenses, and steel typing. It will just be so hard to take down. So that could be a really cool and interesting idea to try out. That's going to be all for us on Runerigus today. I love this Pokemon. I've just bred myself one, and hopefully it's going to do a lot of damage. I'm very excited to use it. But over on John's channel, you need to check check out what we've made of Cursula, which is a very interesting ghost type, incredibly powerful. Whereas this thing is bulky, that thing is a powerhouse. So check out what you can do with that thing. If you enjoy this content, please leave a like and consider subscribing to the channel and look at the playlist for more. All that's left to be said is I've been Foo, you've been awesome, and hopefully see you next time. Goodbye.